Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. So today's a great day for the market. Bitcoin blew past 51,000, but there may be trouble on the horizon. Bitcoin is actually going parabolic, according to Peter Brandt, but it's what he says next in this article that really has me concerned. And we're going to take a look at some logarithmic charts, uh, which I'm really not good at, but uh, that's why I have the guys from Market Rebellion to help me. And also where all this Bitcoin is actually going into as far as the Bitcoin treasuries and the public companies. So we'll get to that real quick. But uh, first, let's take a look at what is going on in the market. And today I woke up to some pretty amazing news. Uh, Bitcoin is above 51,000, which has uh, not happened yet. And uh, I thought it would blow past 51,000 and then we would just, uh, you know, go right back. But uh, here we are again. It is what is it? February 17th, 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, nice brisk day here in El Paso. Hopefully it goes above 60 at some point. I know that's, that's these are just my goals. My goals for temperature wise. Anyhow, Ethereum, uh, 1800, tethers tether. So great. Polkadot, 263 up a little bit, $30. Cardano, uh, hang strong. You know, I thought with, 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 the, um, with the shift with what's going on with Bitcoin, we would see more of a, a, a movement with the altcoins, but not so much. Usually kind of goes like this. Bitcoin will shoot up. And the altcoins will kind of just uh, uh, drag along on the coattails of Bitcoin. So uh, we will see. Hopefully Cardano makes it up there. Uh, XRP staying strong, 1%. Congratulations, XRP Army. Don't know how you guys do it. Congratulations to having those diamond hands. And one of the big winners, Binance Coin. And if you know, if you've been on the show for a little bit, you know that I'm really big on utility. So with Binance Coin, what it's able to do, all the different perks that it has, I think it's going to go pretty far. I see it as a top five coin. And then, you know, only time will tell, but I think it's going to do very, very well. And if I could actually get my hands on it, I would. What else we got? Chainlink, USD coin, nothing really good. 13% for Monero. It's pretty awesome. There's, for Monero, there's no real big news. So I'm not for sure why that went up. Crypto.com, top 34, great. Let's take a look at the sentiment. Let me blow this up so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. So sentiment score, let's see what's going to go up in the next hour or so, potentially. Telos, Telos, Telos. Celsius, again, that's a bearish though. Thor, Thor coin, never heard of that. All these ones that, that uh, have these, these huge potentials uh, are the ones that I've never really heard of. I mean, besides Celsius, but um, as time goes on and this market starts to really heat up, the biggest gainers will be the ones that you've probably never heard of. And that's just kind of how it is as far as crypto. So I'm gonna have Peter actually illustrate my point right now when we talk about this uh, initial article. So this one came across, I was uh, perusing Twitter, which I like to do sometimes. And this one came up and uh, I just thought it was interesting because you know Peter Brandt is, he's not a really uh, like a rah-rah, you know, sensationalism guy. He's a old school trader and he'll tell you like, hey, when the information comes in, I'll change my mind at a moment's notice, but this is what we got. And he's been talking about this for some time. And today when I heard that, he says Bitcoin's going, going parabolic. To me, I don't see it because I'm not really, I don't see those charts in, in that way. Uh, of course, I haven't been doing this for 45 years like Peter has. So when he talks about these things, I kind of listen. Also, he was the one that actually called the 2018 crash of Bitcoin. So uh, it's not like he's just pulling things out of the air. He's the one that actually got it right. So what's going on here? Well, Peter Brandt has noted that uh, Bitcoin is in the middle of yet another parabolic event. And I'm like, it's, I mean, it's gone up pretty well. I don't, I don't, like to me, parabolic just means goes like this and that's it, but that's not how it is. As I explained in this chart, it's, it started uh, in late 2018 when the largest crypto was bottoming at roughly $3,100. And now Bitcoin's up uh, 1,300%, which we all know, so great. Brand's got a ton of experience. He said he's, th he's seeing three parabolic advances on a logarithmic chart and the span of 10 years is truly historic. So again, I'm not a big trader, I'm not into the, 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 the TA chart. So I guess this is like the greatest news of all time. And he has this chart right here. Let's see if I can, let me blow it up. And he's looking all the way back from 2018, just this, this, upward, this upward trend and a little bit of a correction here, big upward trend, a little bit of sideways action. Now here we go all the way to where we are at right now. So I think as time goes on, this could be uh, something massive, uh, especially this year, but you always have to be aware of what is going on around you as far as like all these different institutions that are coming in. And I know people say that this is different and uh, you know, this will never go down and I'm just going to keep going up to infinity. I'm here to tell you, that's not how it works. 
And I hate to be the wet blanket and the one that's always like, you got to be cautious. You got to be cautious because damn it, if I don't do it, no one's going to do it. It's like everybody's out there just going, just, you know, just go out there and just, uh, it'll never go down. And uh, here's the price prediction, which I mean, I make my price predictions and that's okay. But I'm just here to just to give you a little bit of warning about what could potentially happen. You know, listen to my advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but this is just the things that I see. So the danger of parabolic. So in purely mathematical terms, parabolic advances are characterized by the increasing angle of ascent. Brandt also cautioned against jumping on the train when a parabolic event already becomes obvious. And he states, once a parabolic move is, is really going on, it's way too late to be a buyer. The train has left the station. If you don't already own a market by the time I point out a parabolic trend, then don't buy based on my chart. And you have to, you have to take it with a grain of salt what Peter's talking about here because Peter is a trader. Uh, and he is at some point an investor in some way, shape or form. But you have to remember when he's talking about like these parabolic runs, he's talking about right now. There is a retracement and there are pullbacks coming. And I will never tell anybody to not invest in a Bitcoin right now because if we're looking at 51,000, uh, my price prediction is is 150,000 by the end of the year. So who wouldn't like to 3x their money right now just by putting into what I believe is the safest cryptocurrency asset uh, that we have right now? So I don't see a problem with investing. When he talks about getting on in, as, as like a parabolic movement, he means as a trader, you don't want to like do some kind of like crazy swing trades right now because it's just going to you know keep going up. Again, uh, I would still put money into, into Bitcoin um, if, if I was starting out over again. Me personally, I'm not doing it because I've already told you that I think it's going to go to 150 and I think there will be a retracement and I'll talk about more about that later. But again, things will be, uh, it, this will be a fantastic bull run for 2021. As far as 2022, it's up in the air. I'm going to let uh, CJ and Alex talk about that in a second. But uh, again, just be cautious. It's a great time but just don't think that these things will never come down because those people who think it'll never come down, that's called euphoria. And that will go away real quick when there's uh, things that are gonna be in a correction. So to finish up here, uh, it states that uh, in January, 2018, Brandt noticed that Bitcoin's previous parabolic advance had been violated. It was followed by an 80% correlation that the legendary uh, guy predicted, great. So he states 80% corrections are most common when parabolic advances are violated. So. I reached out to CJ uh, from uh, Market Rebellion because I don't really know about these charts. And he said like this, let me blow this up as well. So he says, yeah, he goes, look, he goes, I saw this from Peter Brandt this morning. He says, I agree. January to February, 2022 looks like a potential macro cycle top targets well over 150K, give or take a month. So this is the same thing we've seen over the last 10 years, 11 years, so it always, Kind of just follows this the same type of pattern. There's a halving in 2012. You had an all-time high in 2013. There's a massive dip, and then uh, there's just some sideways action as far as a reset in 2015. Then we move forward. Same thing happened in 2016. Having massive all-time high in 2017. This is when Peter Brandt predicted that fall, which it did happen. There was a dip, and then 2019 we just hit, we just hit uh, reset. Kind of went sideways a little bit, peaks and valleys. Now again, the same thing's happening having in 2020. In 2021, we think that this is the, these all-time highs, this is not how we should be looking at it. We should really be looking at it just like this, like in the last one, just like 2016, 2017. So we've got a having it happen in 2020. 2021, we are right here. This is where we're at in the very beginning. This is where I think things are going to go, just like what CJ had said. I see a parabolic bull run, but then there's going to be a retracement and then, there, then a correction, maybe 80% or more or just a little bit less. But I do think that is coming because just by history. So that to me only makes sense. And then I want to show one more thing real quick, and that is the Bitcoin treasuries. So a lot of people will say, well, Rob, you don't know what you're talking about because all the institutions are here and they're not selling. Well, okay, first of all, we've got one. MicroStrategy has said they're not selling. Great. And they've got a ton of Bitcoin, right? So let's just say it. Uh, it's like $3 billion worth. They got 71,000 Bitcoin. You got Galaxy Digital. How much do they have? 16,000 Bitcoin. Okay. Marathon Patent Group, which is, uh, I invest in them as far as stocks. They got 4,800. Square, how much do they have? 4,700, and on down the line, right? So then you got, uh, these are the publicly traded companies. Here are the private companies. They've got 141,000, wow. Oh, Mount Gox, 
Yeah, watch out for that. Grayscale, they have a ton, 600, yeah, they have 649,000 and probably going up. And then if you add them all up, all these companies have 1.2 million, which is 6% of the total. Let me say that again. It is 6% of the total of all the Bitcoin that is actually out there. So when people say this is different, yeah, it's different. I mean, yeah, I'll also have to add Mass Mutual on there. I don't know where they're at, uh, but they probably won't sell. They're a big uh, old school insurance company. But the question then becomes, if you're a publicly traded company, you are beholden to your stockholders, right? And unless you own the majority, like Michael Saylor does over at MicroStrategy, you have to answer those stockholders. And that is just the truth. So if we take a look at inst institutions, do you think they're just like, we believe in the tech. We're huge hodlers. We love you all. We can't wait to get behind this decentralized thing. Or do you think they're just here for a nice little grab and just to uh, offset some of their losses and maybe to uh, diversify and to hedge their bet? Well, could be. Uh, I'm going to have you, um, let's, let's jump in and let's talk to Alex Mascioli. He is the head of institutional services for Bquant, and uh, he knows those guys. So let's just ask him what they're telling him. All right. So here we are back. Uh, Alex Mascioli, head of institutional services over at Bquant. Thanks for joining us. So Alex, what I was just talking about was that I said that Bitcoin itself is being held by a lot of uh, big private companies, public companies, ETF likes. And, and people are telling me that, hey, this will, Bitcoin will go up forever. It will never stop because they will hold it. And if they hold it, then it will never get sold. So we should just hold on to Bitcoin forever or until a price point in the future of 500,000 to a million. I believe that at some point they're going to actually sell. So you deal with these guys, these institutions. Uh, tell me what that sentiment is out there. Are they here to hold forever? Or at some point they're going to be like, you know what? We're out. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I mean, one of the things I agree with you uh, right off the bat is, and I saw this on your show the other day, um, is we are going to uh, hit a bull market uh, high at some point. Um, I, I think that's going to fall around either December, January of uh, this year, next year. Um, and when that happens, there is going to be a retracement. And I think when that event occurs, you're going to have these public companies that have bought Bitcoin for their treasuries have to answer to the bottom line. And when that comes, there's a lot of people who you know, look at the Elon Musk of the world and the others and say, hey, these guys are friends, they're supporting Bitcoin, um, everybody's gonna hold till the moon. That's not gonna happen. Uh, these guys have fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. I think um, you know everybody, maybe with the exception of Michael Saylor, MicroStrategies, who majority owns his company. Uh, but other than that, they're going to sell in order to bring cash and positive balances onto their balance sheet. Uh, so, it, I mean, it, it makes sense to me, but I hear the whole sentiment out there. They're like, no, 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 you don't understand. They're, they're going to be here forever. It's going to work out pretty great. And the whole, kum, you know, let's all get together and rally around and kumbaya. In business, it's a little bit different. So that's how I kind of see it. I just want a little bit of a backup uh, in that yeah. in that same regard. So also, you guys did a, a video three days ago, which I missed where uh, it was, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was you, you see, I mean, the whole crew, CJ, Monty, uh, Ryan, and you guys had called uh, the end of the bull run when? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, December of, um, December, January latest of uh, 2021 to 2022. But yeah, the end of this year, pretty much. Um, okay. I'm looking for it to, for it to peak and hit its stop, probably end November, beginning of December. Bonus question. So what are you going to do around that time? Well, I think there's going to be a heavy retracement. Um, it's historical. And so when that happens, uh, I've been in this game for a little bit now with Bitcoin. I have a good price uh, cost basis to it. I think I'm going to take some profits on my Bitcoin. And uh, when that dip comes, I'm going to buy back in um, rather than hold through it. Sounds like a plan. Like CJ said, nobody ever went broke uh, taking profits. All right. Never. All right, man. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Let's let's jump back. All right. So I hope that made a lot of sense. Uh, I want to thank Alex again for coming on and setting things straight. Uh, you know, he's one of the few people that I can turn to to see what is exactly going on in that institution side. Also, as a little PSA, just want to let everybody know that uh, our B News stake pool is almost at capacity right now. Um, the capacity is around sixty-three million. 
but towards the end of March, they're going to cut it off at 32 million. Uh, that is the Cardano Foundation. So uh, we're doing pretty well. We're at 48.6%. So if you want to delegate uh, to one of our Cardano stake pools, I, there is a link in, in the description of all, all the videos. And you can go there. Let me just pull this up. And you can go to uh, the, the DNU stake pool, uh, which is right by Dan Teaches Crypto. And then when you scroll down, if you want to take a look at what's going on, there's DNews 1 and DNews 2, and it'll pull up all the information. Here is uh, the information for the first stake pool, which just so you know, uh, the industry average is between 4 and 6%. And our return on ADA for 30 days is 5.47. Return on ADA for lifetime is 5.57. So we're doing pretty great. We're doing our job. Uh, also, uh, for the second one, <laughs> we've already got 3 million uh, delegates, and we're only going to and this, we just started this uh, a week ago. So we're only going to take 31 million. So just so you know, that's what's going on. And uh, when you take a look at it, we just started. So if you pull up that information, it won't be too much uh, right now. But again, that is located uh, at Dan Teaches Crypto under the uh, Cardano staking. So uh, that is it for today. So uh, if you made it all the way in, way to the end, hey, thanks for watching all the way. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. That always helps. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that is it. I'll put two more videos up if you like these and let YouTube do its magic. That is all. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.